Welcome to the fourth episode of Taskmaster. My name is Jeremy Wells and I am the Taskmaster. A few months ago, I forced five talented comedians to complete a series of tasks that did not necessarily utilise any of their pre-existing talents. <laughs> At the end of the whole taxing season, one will be crowned Taskmaster champion and they will take home my head cast in gold forged by the team at a much cheaper West Auckland equivalent of Weta Workshop. <laughs> Our comedians, like every week, are David Karaos, <laughs> Guy Montgomery, <laughs> Laura Daniel, <laughs> Matt Heath, <laughs> and Ursula Carlson. <laughs> I'd like to take this moment to give a shout out to the essential workers, Taskmaster's assistants. The last year and a half has proven just how vital they are. <laughs> one I'm particularly fond of is my own one, and that's Paul Williams. <laughs> so tell us about this week's prize task, Paul. This week, I hope the police aren't watching, because we've asked them to bring in the most impressive stolen item I won't knock if you won't knock. <laughs> okay, let's start with Guy. I have the, the highest honour that can be bestowed in the British honours system. I've actually stolen a Victoria Cross. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What? So obviously the material item is incredible, but for me, I think the main thing I've stolen there is the valour. <laughs> you don't know whose it was? Well, I, no, I do. It would be incredibly incriminating to say whose. <laughs> David. I stole the shoe rack from my flat. <laughs> Last night was when they found out I had stolen it. Here's the group chat message. Who moved the shoe rack? Not me, I was very confused when I saw that too, lol. What the fuck? <laughs> Tim's are missing. Followed by, David, is this your stolen item? <laughs> David, you fuck. <laughs> Matt, what did you bring in? There's a part of TVNZ, it's known as the bowels. And I was shooting a TV show there and I went the wrong way on the way back from the toilet and I ended up in this room full of artefacts from ancient TV shows. And this won't mean anything to this side here. <laughs> but I found the Top Town Trophy. That is the actual Top Town Trophy, nicked it out of TVNZ. <laughs> so, you know that this is a TVNZ show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they won't watch, will they? It's actually pretty rubbish, isn't it? For a trophy for a whole town, for the most popular show in the country. Well, so I'm not sure we can be critiquing trophies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Laura, what did you bring in? I stole Paul's girlfriend. <laughs> we went on a date, we had a magical time, we kissed, we had candy floss, I've stolen her heart. <laughs> Do you find that amusing, Jeremy? I think that's fantastic. You know what else is fantastic? Um, I also stole your girl. <laughs> want to win now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo. Were you laughing? No, I don't laugh. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, it's probably good that you weren't laughing because um, I also took your girl. <laughs> <laughs> you find that amusing, David? What the fuck? I also took your girl. <laughs> what? We hung out outside a, a Royal Oak pack-and-save. <laughs> I know the one! 
I take her there too. <laughs> Matt, yeah. it did take a while to track your girl down, but uh, I found her. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula, um, I respect you too much. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Very good. Ursula. Talk about stealing hearts. I recently found out that someone is madly in love with me and I went over and tried to talk sense into the person and <laughs> they weren't home, so I just took a little memento and I uh, got this guy. Yeah. What? Oh. Little teddy bear. That's not any teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Whose teddy bear is that? That is my teddy bear, Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> is it me or does Gregory just seem a little bit sad? Yeah, he smells weird too, mate. <laughs> to be fair, I think both Laura and Ursula deserve highest points here because I think your one was particularly good. David deserves one point for that shoe rack. <laughs> and from you, Guy, I think you stole something that you could go to jail for. <laughs> you stole something that you could be fired for. <laughs> so I think probably you should have two points and I think you should have three points, Matt. Do you want to recap that for idiots? OK. <laughs> One point for David, two points for Guy, three points for Matt, four points for Ursula, five points for Laura Daniel. <laughs> Let's dive into a bona fide video task, shall we, Paul? Let's do it. This task was recorded at the beautiful Lake Taskmaster, which is also known as a disgusting small pond. <laughs> Hello, David. Quite a long walk. Sorry. Fuck, this better not be like one of those married at first sight scenarios. I'm not marrying this clown. See you, man. Good to see you. Get the Swiss ball in the kayak. You cannot get wet. Fastest wins. Your time starts now. I feel like the natural thing would be just to give it a go. Is it going to bounce? But it's definitely going to bounce out, isn't it? <laughs> no. I'm going to the shed. Before we go on, I feel like I've got to get this off my chest. Swiss balls are way too big. I was recently trying to play basketball in Zurich. <laughs> we couldn't buy a basket. <laughs> this task seems quite straightforward. Who's up first? Here's Laura and Guy. <laughs> I should have attached something to the ball. Oh! No, come back. Where's this current coming from? Oh. Yeah? Can you come here? OK. Can you run? OK. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I got you, I got you. Can you get wet, Paul? I'd just prefer not to. But you can. Should we get a stick? I think maybe you should get a stick. <laughs> no good. Oh, still attached to the ground. I'll go back to the shed. Yeah, baby. Can I go get some rope? Yeah. Aww. Oh. I'm coming, ball. Why didn't you think of this in the first place? What an idiot. Oh, no, not tight enough. I stay so dry. So just explain to us what gave you the confidence to think that you were going to be able to throw it in in one go? If you got it in one go, you would look like a legend and worth the risk. <laughs> and what part of you guy thinks that there's a current in a pond? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, when I first went up to the shed and I gathered these tools, I saw a pair of galoshes in the corner of the shed. <laughs> but I thought, 
I'll save those for another task. <laughs> what was the timing? Paul? So, Guy, 12 minutes 13. Laura, 17.22. <laughs> Who else dares throw a Swiss ball into a kayak, Paul? 12 minutes is the time to beat. Here is my main man. If you exclude my father, my brother, <laughs> uh, Jeremy, my closest male friends, <laughs> Neil Diamond. It's Matt Heath! <laughs> <laughs> I've got a plan. <laughs> what do you reckon? Underarm? We've been working together for a long time, and finally, I've seen something which actually makes me respect you. Uh, I still haven't seen anything from you that makes me respect you, but I. But boy, how smart, eh? <laughs> All you guys, and then I just. <laughs> What's the timing on that one? Very quick. Three minutes twenty-three. Oh, that's pretty good. You got to say. Really good, man. Really, really, good. Good. really, really smart. Good. Good. Here's Ursula Carlson <laughs> and David Pereos. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> no, 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 no! It is on anchors. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Mm. It's like it's going away. It actually does. Quite quickly. Oh, so did it! <laughs> It's like it's coming back now. Let's try positive thinking. Well, what do you want me to think? Positive thoughts about the ball coming back to me. OK. If I was just patient at the start, I might have been able to do this 10 minutes ago. You're really picking up some pace now. To the wrong So What are you thinking? What do you are mean? Are you doing the positive thoughts for the ball to come here oh, or to sorry. go there? I started thinking about those ducks. <sighs> Make sure you don't get wet. Go to Ursula. Go to Ursula. Good thinking, Paul. It'll be easier if I deflate it. Oh no. Oh no. No! It's actually quite soothing. Here you go, Paul. Woo! I've done this half assed the whole time. Fuck! <laughs> there. <laughs> Terrible. David, I don't think there's going to be a more harrowing image on TV this year than you pulling that saggy, deflated <laughs> Swiss ball out of that disgusting pond. I thought I was a genius once I stabbed the Swiss ball. Well, let's talk about that because you really took to that Swiss ball. It didn't puncture the first two times. There's a bung, you moron. Unbung. I'll, I'll fucking bung you soon. <laughs> Things have gotten pretty dire when you're taking tips from Matt Heath. <laughs> David was 20 minutes and 58 seconds. <laughs> Ursula was a respectable 15 minutes 31, which ah. put her into third place. One point David, two points Laura, three points Ursula, four points Guy, and five points to Matt Heath. After five points from that task, out in first place with eight points, Matt Heath. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> All right, Paul, time to load me up with another task. Jeremy Wells, I hope you're feeling festive because it's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> uh. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. This is adorable. Do you do this? Yeah. Wow. Thank you. It's got my name on it. Bit of a Christmas fan, actually. 
Choose a prison. Love with your legs, eh? I'm gonna go for the most glamorous one. Is it a PS5? Ooh. Ooh. Perform an original Christmas song. It cannot include any of the following words. Santa, joy, jingle. Snow, reindeer, tree. December, North Pole, elf. <laughs> Jolly, holy, holly. Christmas or holiday. However, it must reference your present. There's some kind of sand in here. Most festive song wins. You have one hour. I want this one. A muffler. <laughs> what is it? It's literally just oats. Oh, it's a shoehorn. Oh, nice. Thank you. <gasps> is this a laminator? I think so, yes. <laughs> I've never felt more vegan in my life. You happy with that? Yeah, but I wasn't expecting anything. Is there a grand piano anywhere? Do you play the piano? No. <laughs> First up, it's Matt Heath, who, remember, is technically a professional musician. He's released three albums with his band, Deja Voodoo. <laughs> remember, Matt's song must include a reference to his gift, which was a muffler slash exhaust pipe. Yeah. Enjoy. Me and Paul would like to perform a little, little song for you, and so I hope you enjoy it in this very special time of year, isn't it, for uh, Kiwis across the country? Present tree winter. I'm happy turkey stuff in the family. Chicken. Oh, who's got the mistletoe? Cause baby, I'm coming home. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. And particularly, yeah. there'll be no tasering tonight. <laughs> I thought we worked well together, man. Like, we could probably do something. OK. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> man, I just want to say, you've been killing this episode. You've done a great job so far. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> so before we move on, Paul, can you tell me, what were the words that you couldn't use, yes. right? There was quite a long list. Mm -hmm. I do believe tree was one of the words. I didn't say tree. <laughs> I kind of feel like I heard something like that. Maybe if we play back the first two words of the song, should we have a listen to those? Present tree. <laughs> it was a very simple mistake, but I should point out that Matt practiced this song seven times. Oh. And between each practice, he reread the list. <laughs> Who well. has a merry song for us next, Paul? Here is an a cappella effort from David Correos, who has to try to shoehorn in his gift a shoehorn. <laughs> I was sitting by the fire, I was wired and also tired, smoked a joint and drank a coffee, waiting to open a present for me. I looked under the tall bush. <laughs> Maybe I'd smoke some really strong kush. Cause what I saw was a man stealing from me. <laughs> Saint Nick, give me back my shoehorn. <laughs> These boots cannot be worn. 
I'll trade you some stained corn. Saint Nick, give them back to me. I need them for my family. That would be lovely. Saint Nick, give it back to me. There you go, Matt. You could have called it a tall bush. <laughs> Stayed in the race. That was beautiful, man. Yeah. I love you. I love you too. I love you too. Talk me through the logic here. So you're talking to Saint Nick, who's stolen the presents from under your tall bush. <laughs> Doesn't he give out the presents? <laughs> That's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next, Paul? Up next, with the voice of an angel, and the laminator of an angel who wants to prolong the life of their certificates, <laughs> it's Laura Daniel. This one goes out to all the lovers spending time together in the festive season. <laughs> Listen up. It's a bright summer's day Cause this time in New Zealand The skies are not grey You've woken up beside me And you're not in your sleigh But before you leave this evening I just wanna say, yeah, yeah I wanna laminate this calendar day Hey, <laughs> laminate it and you take it away Hey Day. I want to laminate this calendar day. Hey. Merry, merry Jesus' birthday. <laughs> he blessed us with laminators and clay. If Jesus was here, we'd have a three-way. <laughs> and then I laminate this calendar day. Who's left, Paul? Next is Ursula, who received a box full of oats, and she seemed disappointed that it was vegan. Is that correct? Look, I was just disappointed that I had to sing because I'm tone deaf and be, I have an accent and I sing in it. <laughs> Let's play Ursula's song. Enjoy. All right, hit it, Paul. Oh, vegan night. You descend on my ass like a witch against glass. You make me regular at night. You make my shit take flight. Xmas time, or I'd rather shit my pants or have a bout of swollen glands. Thank Christ for the oats so we can feed them goats. Oh, big night. Yeah. That's it, that's it, stop that. <laughs> that's my song. Merry Xmas Vegan Night. Okay, was that it or yeah. rehearsal? No, that was it. Okay. Do you think you can do better? I, I wasn't saying that. No, I think that wraps it up for me. Okay. <laughs> well, you've still got 30 minutes and 40 seconds, but you're happy with that? I am fairly confident that I'm not going to crush this challenge, but I know at some point you and I are going to box and or wrestle and I'm going to crush that one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ursula. I think I speak for everyone when I say that there was nothing good about that at all. <laughs> I could not agree with you, Paul. <laughs> Why did you turn your shoulder to Paul and sort of sing around the corner? Oh, I was being sexy. <laughs> I think that's how straight people do it. <laughs> We've got one song to go, is that right? We do, and he'd like to wish you 
a Guy Montgomery Christmas. <laughs> this is Guy Montgomery and Paul Williams with the festive fox. Well, he's the festive little fox, and he's quite unorthodox, but he's giving out the presents for this year. It's December 24, and morale needs a jump start. For young Guy, well, he knows the cupboard's bare. But the fox won't let that be. He's got treats for all you see, and he will not stop till all have had their share. For Guy's mother needs an oven, and the father needs some lovin', and the sisters a trip to the county fair. So the fox, he fucks Guy's dad, and the mother is quite mad till she sees oven beneath the chandelier. And the sisters leave the house, all is quiet as a mouse, but there's nothing yet for Guy, no nothing here. This clever little fox <laughs> leaves a six-plug multi-box, and young Guy, he's no longer in despair. <laughs> Everyone got what they need for the fox, a glass of mead, <laughs> for his work is now quite finished for the year. And he looks upon young Guy, both their hearts are filled with glee, and between just you and me, here's what he said. Why, it's pretty tough work being a fox, but when I see your family with all these treats bestowed upon them and the oven plugs into the multi box just perfect, it so makes it all worthwhile, really. <laughs> That is a terrifying insight into the Montgomery family Christmas. Right there, I yeah, I remember them with mixed memories, really. <laughs> Mum was always scuppering around for an oven and Dad would be out the back just absolutely going hammering tongs on a fox. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I got Paul with that. <laughs> You've also got Paul on your T-shirt, I see. Yes. Yeah, fitting with the theme, which I didn't know would be the case. This is young Paul as a chorister. Mm. I mean, I've got a treasure trove of Paul backstage. <laughs> okay, Matt, you get one. I'm not going to completely disqualify you. I'll still give you one point. Actually, I deserve one. I can get, I'll give my two points to Matt. That makes three. Because it was a beautiful song. He had a beautiful song. I'll take one. He can have my two. Okay. So, very festive. So, so, so Ursula's taking the one point. Ursula gets one. Taking, taking Matt gets one. two. David gets three. And then Guy four and Laura five, I think, for that. Um, what's next, Paul? We're heading back to the Taskmaster house. But I must warn everyone, something about this next task is a little fishy. Hey, Paul. Hello, Matt. This is a terrifying room. Hello. Hello, Guy. It's me. I know. Ooh. Finally! This is my buzz. Can I take it? You may. Me? I want to eat one, but I shan't. Shoot a chocolate fish into the fishbowl. You must say the name of a different animal with each shot. Your first successful shot is your animal. Most powerful animal wins. Ooh, OK. <laughs> I reckon I'm going to get down to, like, insects. It's a good task. I know. I like animals, and I love chocolate fish. I'm thinking physical strength is going to be a winner for me here, but I'm happy to be swayed by a convincing argument. Who's first? Being singled out for the third time this episode, this could go either way. Here's Matt Heath. <laughs> Your time starts now. Blue whale. Tiger. Liger. Otter. Oh. <laughs> Why'd you say otter? I, I shouldn't have said otter. I was just throwing one away as a practice shot. Otter. Otter. What would have been your dream animal? Horse. Otter. It's been a little thing for a long time. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Matt. Otter. Otter, Matt. Where did that otter come from? 
<laughs> well, your dream animal, interestingly. I love a horse. Yeah. Other kids have imaginary friends when they're growing up. Matt had an imaginary pony. Mm. A pink pony called Starlight Macintosh. <laughs> really? I actually shared that with you in confidence. <laughs> Who's next, Paul? Can anyone beat an otter? The answer is almost definitely yes, but let's take a look anyway. Here's Guy and Laura. It's not going to take this many fish for me to get a fish in the bowl. Can you imagine? Yeah. It'll be humiliating. Look at this. Mouse. Practice shot. I'm going to start easy. Uh, fish. Cool, great. Would you like fish? I'm fine, thank you. you sure? Yeah, I'm working. Kitten. <laughs> Work your way up the animals, Laura. I'm getting closer. Mastiff. Dog. Panther. Oh, can I just get a pen and a piece of paper? There's probably some upstairs. What's your favourite animal? A cat. Me too. Really? Yeah. My cat? Martin. My cat. Your cat. Sam. Okay. Ideally, I'm going to land on blue whale. What would be your dream powerful animal? Elephant. It could hold people, could hold both of us. I don't want to put both of us on it because I don't think elephants should be ridden. I'm a vegetarian. You know that saying, an elephant never forgets? Mm hmm Can an elephant have amnesia? Not sure. Because if they can, we've got to destigmatize that. Mm. For a start. Uh, leopard. Oh. Well, don't put a camera there. That's not my fault. Oh, no, it's... it's absolutely not my fault. No, I know. A lion? <laughs> Hippogriff. Jaguar. Ooh. You seemed a little disappointed. Well, I've told you what I wanted. I was building up the blue whale. I didn't think I was going to be that good. Red panda. Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> you happy with that? No, I'm not happy with that. That's not the strongest animal. But a jaguar is strong. A jaguar coming here would destroy you, tear you limb from limb. But not me. So I'd say, well, I listed you as a strong animal, and in doing so, you motivated me to succeed. So you and I are allies. I don't think it would understand that. Yeah, no, I would. Thank you, Laura. Piscatarian. Knowing what we know now, Guy, you must be very pleased with the Jaguar. Well, yeah, but I, I set my standards a little bit higher than just beating Matt. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that Laura's got a red panda. So far, the strongest in looks. <laughs> a very attractive, beautiful animal, the red panda. Uh, the red panda has reddish-brown fur, a long, shaggy tail, and a waddling gait. <laughs> So Jeremy will be ranking them in terms of how powerful he thinks that they are. And then after the show, when the camera's off, we are going to fight the animals. <laughs> yes. OK, two more to go. Last but not least, we have David Correos and Ursula Carlson. <laughs> uh, cat. Oh! That was close, right? Elephant. Elephant. Lion. Lion. Giraffe. Giraffe. Monkey. Gorilla. Gorilla. Eel. Fuck. I think when you go into the zoo, meerkat. Oh! Falcon. Warbler. Blue tit. Mark. I went to school with Mark. He was a real fucking animal. Seal. Wild cat. Hippo. <laughs> Kill deer. Ooh! Close. That's animized. Are you allowed to look up animals alphabetically for me? Okay. Shark. Clam. Muscle. Oyster. Affin pincher? Affin pincher. That sounds like something you get a jail term for. Whale. <sighs> Gecko. American Alsatian. Can I throw more than one? Yeah. Alaskan Malamut. Toad. Oh, OK. OK. American Pitbull Terrier. Pitbull. Hell of a whistle, and my red eyed tree frog. <laughs> yes! There we go. Red eyed tree frog. Thank you. Whoa. Whoa. See you. What made you go with a red eyed tree frog? Great animal. Would you say a powerful animal? Yes, because I've got powerful legs. For jumping? Yeah, for jumping. You ever seen an elephant jump? No. Nah. Red eye tree frog. Powerful. Okay. Yeah. Fuck. 
Does this go up against other? Fuck! Oh no! <laughs> You wait, you wait till we get to the record. I'm gonna have debate level. Facts. Facts, that's the word. <laughs> wow, there's some interesting, powerful animals that you're attempting to name there. The oyster. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula, you be happy with yours. So so a pit bull that can fuck anything up. I've got some facts here, okay? <laughs> Fact number one, red-eyed tree frogs spend the majority of their lives in trees. <laughs> red-eyed tree frogs are not venomous. <laughs> red-eyed tree frogs can jump up to 20 times its own body length. Now, I used to be an Olympic weightlifter. The term power is strength times speed. None of these animals even compete per capita. We are New Zealand. We base our whole <laughs> fucking personality on per capita. Personally, I reckon, Laura, yours is the least powerful. The red panda is a pathetic animal. <laughs> so you get one. Otter boy over yeah. here is on two. <laughs> Red-eyed tree freak comes in with three. Pitbull four, and then I would hate to take on a Jaguar. That would be me there, five. I'll take that. Thank you, Taskmaster. I'll take it. Okay, Paul, a quick points update, if you will. Laura's on 13, and with 15 points, Guy Montgomery. <laughs> OK, there's no better time than now than to head on to our stage for our final task. Off we go. Well, well, well. Surprise, surprise, surprise. It's time for a live task. That is correct, Jeremy Wells. Who would you like to read the live task? Oh, give it to Guy Montgomery. Thanks, Paul. Can you read it in the voice of the fox? <laughs> I, I actually can't in good conscience do that. Carry a briefcase of either nothing or onions across the stage and place it on the mat. The taskmaster will then attempt to guess what you were carrying. Nothing or onions. <laughs> if he guesses correctly, you are eliminated. If you deceive him, you qualify for another round. Most deceptions wins. <laughs> Sounds like a right good time! Let's start at this end. Fuck. Move along to Ursula. Good luck, man. All right, let's do it. On the mat, please, David. <laughs> I reckon that doesn't have any onions in it. Onions. <laughs> Double the bluff. Guy Montgomery, please choose your briefcase. <laughs> onions. Onions. Oh. Absolutely devastating. <laughs> Laura Daniel. <laughs> Onions. Onions. Oh. I'm going to say onions. Nothing. Oh. Too, too quick. Onions. Nothing. <laughs> David, please begin round two. <laughs> Onions. Nothing. <laughs> Why change a winning formula? No onions. Correct. If Ursula doesn't succeed, David Corios wins the task. Absolutely 100% onions. You are 100% right.
The winner of the toss, David Corios. Come on down, let's go. Obviously, uh, David came first, so five points. So well done, David. Thank you. Thank you. Also, Matt, three points each. And I think Guy and Laura, one point each. Oh. Not nothing. So how does that affect our overall points table for the series, Paul? In first place, with the funniest amount of points you can have, 69, Laura Daniel. Yeah. So that's the overall series standings. But of course, there is the all important tonight's winner. Yes. 13 points for David, 14 points for Laura, but the winner with 16 points, Guy Montgomery. Yeah. Congratulations, Ben. Oh, so relieved. <laughs> I get my girlfriend back. And your wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Guy. Get up on that stage and enjoy your stolen stuff, you low-down, dirty criminal. <laughs> <laughs> what a journey of discovery we've been on today. We've become acquainted with the inflatable balls of Switzerland. We've familiarised ourselves with the pagan talking fox rituals of the Montgomery family. <laughs> and most importantly, we've discovered that our winner for episode four is Guy Montgomery. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Can you give me a B? It's okay, Paul. It's just a B. If you're as keen as a bean... Beans, 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 beans! Come feel my bean, Paul. You're gonna love this task. <laughs> you're a fuck, but you are a brilliant little fuck. Yeah, yeah. For more Taskmaster, subscribe now. <laughs>